since it's about to be the weekend. Once you get that, you want to upload it into the registry. If you don't know how to do that, go to our website. Uh, there's a CEU fact sheet that will walk you through everything from entering the website, uh, entering the registry, changing your password, um, and so on. We're going to get started. Please save your questions till the end. Um, if you have something you would like to add or um, something that you want to ask during the presentation, just add it to the chat and then you can let me know. Otherwise, if we can keep the questions to the end, that would work better. Thank you very much. And we are going to get started. Nia, if you could just keep, continue to monitor the, um, the waiting room and the chat, I would appreciate it. Okay, welcome to yoga for CHW, stress relief. This is gonna build on the Yoga 101 and 102 webinars we've already taught, but it's okay if you've never done yoga before. We try to teach you helpful things that you can do yourself, but also things that are easily accessible for you to share with friends, family, and also your clients. I am Portia Fisher. I'm the Education and Registry Manager here at Mishwa. I'll be assisted today by the beautiful Nia Watkins, who is our intern, and I'm going to ask her to go to the next slide. Okay, so what is stress? I'm sure we've all experienced it, but the technical definition of stress is a mental or emotional strain or tension resulting from adverse or demanding circumstances. And this can take the forms of strain, pressure, tension, uh, nervous tension, and worry. Not only do these um, things happen to your mind, so you're, you're thinking about finances, work, school, family, but it, it can also have an effect on your body. Next slide. Okay, so what controls your stress response? There are two parts of the autonomic nervous system that are responsible for your stress responses. And for now, we'll call them the parasympathetic and the sympathetic nervous system. We're going to break it down for you so that you realize that the parasympathetic nervous system is just the body's relaxation response and the sympathetic nervous system is the body's fight or flight response. The Relaxation response decreases your heart rate while the fight or flight response is responsible for increasing your heart rate. Next slide. So the fight or flight response is what makes you feel nervous or agitated when you're stressed out. The parasympathetic system or relaxation response is what allows the body to calm down after you've been agitated. Next slide. Okay, so breaking down here, we have the parasympathetic, which is the nervous system, uh, the side of the nervous system that's responsible for the relaxation response. And the sympathetic, which is responsible for fight or flight is on the right. So let's talk about the right side first. So when you get stressed out, there is a physical response from the body that allows you to either A, fight, or B, run away, right? So the Physical response to stress allows you to physically do something about those stressors because the body and the mind both assume that the stress that you're receiving is a physical stress that you need to respond to with your body in a physical manner. So what will happen is your pupils will dilate, the body stops um, producing saliva and sending it to the mouth because it wants to conserve that water. Um, your heart rate will start to accelerate, your uh, bronchi will start to dilate so you can take in more air. Um, it will inhibit the body's ability to uh, run the digestive system. So your digestive tract will screech to a halt. You'll uh, start to convert glucose, um, glycogen to glucose so that you have those extra reserves in your bloodstream so that you can run away or fight. Um, it also stops some of the internal organ functions that aren't necessary. The relaxation response, on the other hand, does pretty much the opposite of that. So the, the pupils will constrict and relax. Saliva will begin to go back into the mouth. The heart rate will slow. If you're not muted, go ahead and please mute yourself. Um, the bronchi will constrict in the lungs. Uh, you will begin to uh, digest your food again. So stomach cramps might stop and um, all of the other bodily functions begin to return to normal. Next slide. So the key benefits of managing your stress are that once you activate the relaxation response, you begin to rest the digestive system. So a lot of times when we get stressed out, maybe you've had um, a knot in your stomach, people will say their stomach is tight. People will say that um, they're having cramps or intestinal distress. And that's because those parts of the body will no longer get blood flow 
flow and will screech to a halt. So once you initiate the relaxation response, everything starts to go back to normal, that tightness will decrease and the functions will start to resume. Um, other benefits include the ability to rest, to digest your food properly, and the body will go back to healing itself because when you are in that fight or flight response, those activities stop. So the body says, if it's working on an illness that you have, or perhaps an injury, all of that will stop because those functions will in turn go to different muscle groups so that you can either you know, fight someone or run away. Um, once you start to relax, your respiration rate will slow and the levels of oxygen and carbon dioxide in your bloodstream will begin to return to normal so you won't um, feel as agitated. Next slide. Other benefits include a slowing heartbeat, lowering of the blood pressure, constriction of the pupils, um, blood flow that's been inhibited or stopped to the skin surface and the internal organs will resume to normal. So sometimes people will either get hives or blotchy or sometimes go white as a sheet. Both of these will start to level out. Your digestive system again will start to relax and all of those body, body functions that have been stopped will start to return to normal. Next slide. So how does yoga work and how does it affect the autonomic nervous system on both sides? So by doing yoga, you can actually create physiological changes in the nervous system. So what you wanna do is you want to activate the relaxation response, which will mitigate or lessen the effects of the fight or flight response. So as you begin to uh, begin the relaxation response, you can counteract the effects of all of the adrenaline that gets released into your bloodstream, the cortisol that's in your bloodstream, and the um, tendency to hyperventilate or have rapid breathing in and out through the mouth. Uh, yoga creates a habit of repetition, which rewires us to, if we start to, re if we swap out good behaviors for negative behaviors, we can start to use repetition to create a mindset where the body will, instead of automatically turning to stress and responding it, in a worried or anxious way to starting to release the relaxation response instead. Next slide. How yoga works continued. So the very first basic steps of yoga are meditation. And that is simply sitting, noticing, becoming more aware and learning how to use your breath to calm not only the body, but to calm the mind. Once we start to make these changes, it becomes a habit and we can start to turn to these behaviors instead of our typical behaviors of reacting or overreacting. So yoga teaches us when stressors come, we can either react or respond out of habit, or we can choose to respond appropriately. And oftentimes yogis say the best response is none at all. So the definition of yoga is when after a moment of stability, the mind ceases its fluctuations and remains naturally quiet, it begins its transformation to constant stability. So yoga is the cessation of the fluctuations of the mind, which means that when your mind is constantly telling you, I need to worry about this, I need to worry about that, focusing simply on your breathing, on the present moment, and allowing the relaxation response to happen will start to calm the mind. And once you calm the mind, the body has no choice but to follow. Can everyone still hear me? Can I get a thumbs up? Can you hear me? Okay, I saw something in the chat. Thank you, next slide. Okay, so meditation, what does it mean? People say, oh, why am I meditating? Is it because I'm joining a religion? Is it a cult? No, absolutely not. Meditation is compatible with every other religion or in the absence of religion. Um, all we're trying to do is turn our mind to focus on our positive qualities. Once we do that and start to focus on the positive, those positive qualities and thoughts become dominant. The negative qualities start to become dormant, weakened. Our negative reactions like fear, anger, anxiety, resentment that trigger that fight or flight response start to weaken, start to lessen. And those positive qualities triggering the relaxation response by returning to the breath instead of reacting or overreacting start to lessen. The steps of meditation include awareness, self-observation, and repetition. Next slide. 
So the steps to meditate. Everyone asks me, oh my gosh, I just can't do it. It's too hard. Do you need to sit on a certain chair? Do you need to sit on a cushion? I always tell people it's so easy to meditate. When you meditate, you start where you are. You don't need to go anywhere. You don't need to do anything. You don't need to change your clothes or your shoes. You don't have to have a special cushion or a yoga mat. All you need to do to meditate is to find a comfortable seated position. Does that mean you can't meditate when you're standing? Absolutely not. If you found yourself waiting in line somewhere where you didn't need to have your eyes open, you could close your eyes, take a moment to come to your breath, and then open them back up and feel more relaxed. Another thing people ask me is, do I have to meditate for an hour, two hours, six hours? No, you do not. Meditation can start with three simple breaths. It can be one minute long. It can start to go to two minutes, three minutes. What most people do is try to start with one minute and then build up from there. So the first thing you just need to do is become aware of your body, your breath, your mind, and start to acknowledge whatever thoughts that you have going on in your mind. That self-observation will allow you to realize what it is that you need to let go of. So for some of us, it's self-doubt, worries about finances, relationships, stressors from work, um, a lot of fear about things that might not actually happen, a lot of regrets or worries about things in the past that we can't ever change. So we spend a lot of time in our own heads, uh, stressing about things that either we can't change in the past and might not actually happen in the future. So self-observation really allows us to open ourselves up to realize that some of the thoughts in our heads are not truly us. They're just thoughts. You are not your thoughts. You are the creator of the thoughts. And as the creator of the thoughts, you have the power to change them. Repetition is key. As you sit and try to become still and aware, you will notice that those thoughts start coming back in. In yoga, we call this the monkey mind. The mind always wants to tempt you with different thoughts about what I could be doing right now instead. What am I going to have for lunch? Where am I going to go this weekend? How much laundry do I have to do? How much are my bills going to be this month? What can I pay them? So that's totally normal. But as you begin to repeat your meditation practice, your focus on the breath and your observation of reality, what is, and focusing on the positive and what you're grateful for every day, what you do have and not what you don't, that will start to become easier. And the, the space between those hectic and sometimes useless thoughts will start to grow longer. Next slide. Oh, we're gonna do a short meditation exercise starting with three cleansing breaths. I know everyone is super excited, aren't you? Yay, thumbs up if you're super excited about meditation. <laughs> okay. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to find a comfortable, easy seat. And I know this is a reminder for a lot of you, but if you are seated at your desk, which a lot of you are, so you're in a chair, I am on an exercise ball. So I need to be very careful about closing my eyes and, um, un uncrossing my legs and losing stability. So whatever you're doing, make sure you put yourself first and be safe and mindful. But if you can uncross your legs. And some of us say, well, I can uncross my knees, but I'll just cross my ankles. No, nope, uncross those two. So if you can, you want your knees to be about two fists distance apart and you want your feet to be flat on the floor if possible. So for these three cleansing breaths, we're going to inhale through the nose and exhale through the mouth. And we're going to attempt to do each of these to a count of four. So the tendency when we breathe in and out through the nose, in through the nose and out through the mouth is to press the air out really fast. So the inhale, we focus, it's very long and deep and the exhale, we rush it. But in order to trigger that relaxation response, you have to create a rhythmic method of the breath so that the mind knows that everything is okay. If you're panting, gasping, breathing through your mouth, that's going to help trigger or make the flight or fight response worse because your body says, uh-oh, something's wrong. We need to rev up because you wouldn't be breathing like that if everything was okay. So even when things aren't okay, you can use this cleansing breath to kind of trigger this relaxation response in your mind. So we're gonna inhale for a count of four through the nose, exhale for a count of four through the mouth. It's gonna be kind of hard for me to do it um, as I teach it. So just focus on yourself. So close your eyes if possible. For those of you who are driving, <laughs> please don't do that. And now we're gonna do this together. So I want you to take a breath and then exhale completely. And then on the next inhale, through your nose, we're gonna inhale for a count of four. So inhale, two, three, four. Now exhale out through your mouth, two, three, and 
four. Great, two more of those. At the end of the exhale, close your mouth. Inhale through the nose, inhale, two, three, four. Close your eyes. Exhale, two, three, and four. Okay, last chance, cleansing breath. Close those eyes. Inhale through the nose, two, three, and four. Exhale, two, three, and four. Beautiful job. Now we're going to do the same thing. I am not going to count for you. You're going to close your eyes. You're going to do three cleansing breaths in through the nose and out through the mouth. And you're going to try to only focus on the inhale and the exhale. So try to repeat in your mind what I said to you. Inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. We're going to do that starting now. Go ahead and finish. Exhale completely. On the next inhale, start your count of four. I'm going to close my eyes, breathe with you, and everyone will be quiet. Focus on your breath. As the mind wanders, bring it back to the breathing. Start that second breath. One more breath. Okay, you can open your eyes. How does everyone feel? Was it challenging? Did anyone get distracted by anything in their mind while they were trying to do cleansing breaths? Can I get a hand? I know I was. Be honest, yes, totally normal, right? So you're wondering, am I gonna fall out of my chair? Is someone walking by, looking through the window at my office and thinking that I'm completely crazy? Um, these are all totally normal things, so please, don't worry about that. The more that you do this, the easier it becomes. And they say yoga is a lifelong practice. You never master it. You just go to the next level, the next minute, the next breath. There is no graduation of yoga. There's no yoga Olympics. So don't worry about that. We have a hand raised. Nia, is everything all right in the chat? Bear with us. I just want to make sure we're not having any. Yes, it I'm is. Looking at... Yep. Yeah, it is hard to breathe for a count of four. We're so used to very shallow breathing, right? So we breathe in through our nose, typically out through our mouth, and we only utilize the top third of our lungs. So we do very, very shallow breathing. But the richest carbon dioxide oxygen exchange occurs. So the most cleansing and nourishing breaths are actually in the very bottom of the lungs. So the third lobe of the lungs. And that's where you need to press that air down. So those deep breaths, you want to think about filling your lungs, not just the top part here, the chest where we normally breathe, but you want to think about filling your lungs like a hot air balloon. So a balloon that expands on all sides. So breathe into the back of your lungs, the front, the bottom, press your belly out. And that's going to really make space for a lot more air. And the more air that you take in, um, and this is useful to share with your clients because people think I breathe just right here into the top part of my chest, which sometimes you see rise and fall. Those deepest, most calming breaths are going to happen lower in the lungs to really encourage people to breathe deeply into all areas of the lungs. Great questions. Next slide. Yes, absolutely. Sitting up straight, which we'll, we'll focus on posture when we do our, our exercises. Sitting up straight, so when you're slouching forward, you're really inhibiting the respiratory system, not just the lungs, but the diaphragm, which is responsible for moving the lungs in and out. So definitely, great point. Sitting up straight really expands your ability to take in oxygen. Okay, moving on to the physical portion of the program today. Um, weight-bearing joints. So the weight-bearing joints in the body, as you can see on this diagram, um, are places that stress can hide. So when we don't get that stress out of our systems, we're not doing our cleansing breaths, we're not uh, releasing stress and tension from the muscles, it can hide in these weight-bearing joints. So you can see that those joints include the shoulder, um, the spine, the elbows, the ankles, the hips, the wrists, fingers, knees, and the ankles. So these joints can be under stress from your emotional stress, but they can also be under physical stress and pressure from your bad habits, which could include the way that you stand, lean, sleep, or hold the phone. So sometimes when we're standing, just imagine yourself standing in line, um, you're waiting for a COVID vaccination and you're standing in line and it's very important and you can't leave even though you want to, right? Or you're standing in line to vote 
and you have to vote. So you're standing in line and what's the body's tendency to do? So we tend to put all of our weight on one side to rest the other side and then switch sides and go back and forth. So when you're doing that, although the body thinks that you're resting, you're actually putting all of the pressure from your entire body on one side. So one ankle, one knee, one hip, and that pressure can build up over time and really cause a lot of stress and strain, not only in the muscles, but also in the joints. Anytime that you're leaning in one direction or the other, and you're putting all of your body weight on any certain joint, even if you're just leaning over and putting all your body weight on one shoulder, one elbow, one wrist, that can cause um, some, some stress and strain on the joints. My children who are both addicted to video games, um, the posture of the video games is kind of like a, a hunched over hermit crab in a shell, right? So that that's a repetitive motion. And also the constant movement of your fingers and hands when you're typing, uh, driving, or doing video games can also cause stress and strain on those joints. The way that you sleep can cause stress and strain on your joints. For, for many of you who sleep on your stomach, you'll know that that puts a lot of pressure on the low back and on the neck. Um, and then also just the things we do during our day. So holding the phone like this while you're working, punching forward, typing on a keyboard. These are all things that can also cause stress and strain on the joints. Joints can also suffer more abuse because we have weak muscles that are not supporting them. So in addition to the emotional uh, and mental stress we're putting on them, in addition to all the bad habits that we're doing, they can also suffer uh, abuse from just generalized weakness. So if we are not moving our muscles every single day um, from exercise, with exercise and stretching them, they can um, get short, it's called hypertonic. So they're constricted, contracted, very tight uh, and very tender to the touch. Next slide. Okay, so how do we release stress from the body? So what we wanna do is we wanna release stress that's hidden in all of these joints and then the areas around them. And how do we do this? We want to do gentle movements that squeeze and massage the muscles in the joints and increase circulation and improve blood flow. As we increase circulation and include our slow rhythmic breathing, it's gonna trigger that stress response to go away and the relaxation response to take its place. And as you do this, the body's increased circulation will help to flush out the cortisol and adrenaline that your body releases when you go through the fight or flight response. The one thing I want you to remember as we go through the physical portion of this webinar is never to push or pull harshly on any part of your body. Next slide. Yoga precautions. This is what we say in yoga. You want to accept everything as it is, right? You cannot change your body at this moment. You have to accept whatever it is that you have today and you don't wanna focus on forcing your body to do the yoga. You wanna let the yoga do you. So wherever you are in your life or your body, yoga is there to meet you. Yoga is for every body and every pose that we do, there's a hundred different ways to do it and you just have to decide which one is right for you. Some come, it ranges from the very gentle, most gentle to the most challenging. And most people will fall somewhere in between but just make sure that you're listening to your body and not your ego or your mind and what you think you should be doing or what the picture shows the person doing. Really focus on what your body needs because this is self-care and you're not caring about your body if you're injuring yourself while you're trying to relax. You wanna be mindful of any sensitive areas. If you have any conditions or your clients have any uh, specific issues, whether it's arthritis, a heart condition, a joint replacement, whatever that might be, you want to make sure that they are very mindful. If you can breathe, you can do yoga and maybe that's where you start. Just simple inhales and exhales, cleansing breaths, trying to keep the mind clear, trying to keep the eyes closed and trying to do this for three minutes. That might be challenging enough for some people and that's where you stop. Um, you wanna apply gentle pressure, never yank or pull forcefully in any yoga pose, allow people to do their own yoga, never yank and pull on your own body or someone else's. And finally, if something doesn't feel right or is painful, please do not do it. It doesn't matter what you thought you could do, what you used to be able to do, what you think you might be able to do down the road. Really focus on the present moment, become aware of what is going on with you today and accept yourself exactly as you are, exactly where you are. Okay, great, here we go.
Next slide. So today to increase circulation, we are really gonna focus on doing a lot of circles with the body. The first thing we're going to do are neck circles. This is a great warm up. It's usually accessible for all types of people, all ages, um, all different levels of ability. Um, so just be mindful here. Before we do the neck circles, we wanna gently hold our head in each position uh, for one full breath before we do the circles and I will demonstrate for you. So for this one, you wanna find that comfortable, easy seat. Once again, uncross the knees and the ankles, feet flat on the floor if possible. You wanna lengthen the spine. So ground down through the sits bones at the very bottom of the pelvis, right? So down through your seat, take an inhale to really lengthen your spine, reach up through the crown of the head, inhale, lengthen as much as you can, and then exhale, push the shoulders back, down, and away from the ears. So you stay nice and tall, chest is lifted. Now we're gonna take a big inhale here, and on the exhale, you're just gonna gently and slowly drop your chin to your chest. Does your chin need to touch your chest? Absolutely not. You just want your head to hang heavy like a ripe piece of fruit on the vine. That's been one full breath. Inhale, come right back up through the center. On the next exhale, you're gonna take your right ear to your right shoulder. Everyone, like the girl in this picture, she wants to reach her head up, her hand up here and just yank, yank her head all the way down. Do we need to do that? Absolutely not. Should we like yank on a client's head to get their head lower? Absolutely not. Inhale back up through center. On the exhale, you're gonna slowly drop your head back, lift your chin. Does your chin have to face all the way up towards the sky? Absolutely not. One full breath, inhale, come back through center. And this time it's just left ear towards the left shoulder. So as you drop your left ear to your left shoulder, it's not about how close you get the ear to the shoulder. It's just about getting a stretch on the other side of the neck. So you wanna feel that stretch on the right side. Inhale back through center. Now we start our circles. So on the exhale, you're gonna drop your chin to your chest. Inhale, roll your right ear towards your right shoulder. Exhale, drop your head back slowly, gently. Don't drop it back all the way if you're not ready. Inhale, take the left ear towards the left shoulder. Exhale, chin to chest, two more rounds. Inhale to the right. Exhale, drop it back. You can close your eyes if you're comfortable. Inhale to the left. Exhale, drop it down. One more round in this direction. Take it to the right, inhale. Inhale is usually a lifting movement. Exhale, lowering. Inhale, lifting. Take it to the left. Exhale, lower chin to chest. Now we're gonna rise back up through center. We're gonna take three neck circles in the opposite direction. So take an inhale here. And then exhale, drop your chin to your chest, slowly, gently. You might be able to go a little further, but don't push it. Inhale, take it to the left this time. Really feel that stretch through the right. Exhale, drop it back. You might be able to lift your chin a little bit higher as the neck releases. Inhale, take it to the right. Exhale, chin to chest. Beautiful, we're gonna do two more rounds like this. You don't have to keep up with me, but if you need to move faster or slower, inhale left. Exhale, drop it back. You might hear some snap, crackle, pop, that's normal. Take it to the right, that's an inhale. And then chin to chest. Try not to hunch your shoulders forward. One more round, inhale, take it to the left. Exhale, drop it back. Inhale, take it to the right. Exhale, drop it like it's hot. Inhale all the way back up. How do you feel? Hopefully a little looser, a little warmed up. We're gonna move on to the next slide. The next weight bearing joint we're gonna work on is the wrist. And so we're gonna do some wrist circles. And again, we're going to um, hold our wrists in uh, one direction first for one full breath. So if you wanna pull your hands up, I'll demonstrate for you. We're going to start with the right, but it doesn't really matter. So um, you want to, on the exhale, just fold your hand in half and you can use your left hand to press on it. You just want to pull your palm towards your forearm and hold here for one full round of breath. So you want to feel that stretch on the outside of the hand and then all the way through the wrist and into the forearm. So that's one full breath. Just like this. Yeah. And then inhale to release. And then exhale, drop it back, and you're just pulling your fingers back with your opposite hand. And you don't even need to use your hand. You can just press your fingers back if you need to be more gentle. And now you wanna feel a stretch to the palm. This is great for people who do a lot of typing or squeezing on a steering wheel. 
um, and then stretching out the front of the forearm. This is great for carpal tunnel or somebody who carries a lot of heavy stuff like a waitress on a tray, like I did in college. This is a great counter stretch. Inhale, go ahead and come back up. We're just gonna switch hands, moving to the left. On an exhale, you're just gonna bend your hand forward and then you can apply that pressure here. One full round of breath. And again, you wanna feel that stretch all the way down the front of the forearm, in the front of the hand. So that's an inhale and exhale, inhale to release. And then exhale, just switch and open the hand up and pull those fingers down. You feel that stretch? I mean, your body loves this. For those of you sitting at desks or driving in cars, your body, this is like ice cream for your tendons and your ligaments. Okay, go ahead and come all the way back up with both hands. So we're gonna do our hands in, in both directions, three times each. So typically we don't do right and left, we do inside and outside. So it doesn't matter which one, make a light fist, make sure your thumb is on the outside and you're not clenching super tight. So you don't wanna have your thumb inside. So just a nice gentle fist here. And then I want you to do wrist circles first in one direction. So I usually go inside first and go slow, go slow. Yeah, feel it, you feel that? Your wrists love this. Do three, actually that feels so good, let's do five. Yes, a little bonus, no extra charge guys, no extra charge. Okay, let's do one more. And now we're gonna change directions, okay? So after you go inside now, try to go outside. The second one's kind of awkward. I always feel like my wrists look a little crazy when I go this way and they don't even go at the same time. So let's do five, that's three. So go slow and really feel that stretch. And you should have some points that like right there for me is the most sensitive and I kind of hold that one a little bit longer. And if you do it slow enough, I can sometimes feel it all the way down my forearm into my elbow. All right, all finished. What I like to do after I'm done is a little wiggle, shake it out, shake it out, get that blood flow going. Now people walking by your office looking in the window really think you're crazy. What is that person doing in there? Okay, next slide. Now this one I am not going to demonstrate because I'm sitting on an exercise ball. And when Nia and I practiced this before we started, I almost fell to my death, which I thought would be incredibly embarrassing during the webinar. So what you're going to do is you're gonna stabilize yourself in your seat, stabilize one foot flat on the floor, extend the other leg out in front of you. So the foot is lifted and lengthened, right? And so we're first gonna hold it. You're gonna point your toe like a ballet dancer. So really point the toe so that the leg is long and straight and extended for one full breath. You should feel a stretch on the front of the foot and the front of the ankle. You feel that? After you finish that breath, you wanna flex the foot. So pull the toes back up towards you. This time you should feel a stretch all the way up the back of the calf. So from the heel through the Achilles tendon, that thick tendon on the back of the ankle, all the way up to the knee. Do you feel that? If you just did three of these every day, your calves, you could release cramping, stiffness, pain. All right, here we go. We're just gonna stick with this ankle since your foot's already in the air. We're gonna do three circles in each direction. So it doesn't matter which direction, nice and slow. You might wanna hold on to your desk for stabilization here. You're just gonna go in one direction. You know what, let's do five. Making an executive decision to pump it up. So let's do two more and go slowly. If I can re recommend anything, it's to really take your time. One more, really nice. Now, after you do those, you're just gonna switch directions. And the other direction, it feels kind of awkward. And so sometimes I need to stabilize my upper leg, my, my thigh with my hand so that I'm not moving my knee because my knee always wants to help my ankle do this for some reason. Finish up that last one. Really nice. Go ahead and bring that foot back down. We're gonna switch sides. You're just gonna extend that left leg out. Hopefully your calf feels nice and warm. Your foot might feel warm. So extend that left leg out. You're just gonna point the toe like a ballet dancer really contract all those muscles. One full round of breath here. And then we're gonna flex it back. So flex the foot, ankle, uh, and the heel is pointing down. And now the toes are, are facing back towards you. So you feel that stretch up the back of the leg. One full breath. Can you feel that stretch? Feels good. All right, now we're gonna do those ankle circles. We're gonna actually do five. We're gonna do them in one direction. You decide which one and just go nice and slow. So it's like you're trying to draw a circle on the wall next to you with your toes without moving your knee. So try to keep your leg nice and straight. I know my leg wants to move. 
can help my ankle, but my ankle really doesn't need any help. I'm just being lazy. Okay, finish up that last one. And now we're gonna go in the opposite direction. Now remember, nice and slow and make sure you're breathing in and out through the nose, or you can do that cleansing breath. Depends on what kind of week you've had. If you need that cleansing breath, you take it, it's there for you. How about one more ankle circle? Okay, great. From there, go ahead and put that foot back on the ground, stabilize, and we will move to the next slide. Elbow circles. Now these are challenging. So what I like to recommend is we are going to, let's scoot over here so you can see my arm. We're going to extend our arm out first. And then what I like to do is when I send my right arm out, I stabilize it with my left hand, right? So what you wanna do is you want to extend the arm out as far as you can. So really lengthen out, we're gonna do a full round of breath. And what I like to do in addition to extending my arm out is flex my arm, my fist. So this adds an extra stretch. If that helps you, go ahead and add it in. If it doesn't, don't worry about it. After that full round of breath, you wanna bring that elbow in as tightly as you can. Give it a squeeze. You're squeezing all those muscles. Feel like you're making a muscle here, but go all the way back. So you're folding your forearm right into your um, upper arm and lower arm together pushing them together. After that full round of breath, go ahead and release it. And now you wanna hold on to that, that upper arm with your opposite hand. We're gonna do our elbow circles. We're just gonna do three because we're running out of time. So we're going to do a circle in one direction first. Go all the way around. So you can see how challenging this is. Does your shoulder wanna help your elbow? I got you, I got you elbow. No, we don't want the shoulder. He's a good friend, but he needs to stand down. After you finish up that third one, go in the opposite direction. This one's kind of awkward, um, but this really lubricates the joint at the elbow and gets that joint fluid moving around, right? That oil that the tin man needed in his joints, finish up that last one. So it really bathes these joints and that joint fluid and makes everything lubricated and slippery. Good job. Okay, we're gonna switch to the other side. So you're gonna extend your left arm out. You can see a lot of these exercises are very accessible um, to people of all ages, but can also be challenging. Stabilize your upper arm. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna extend that opposite arm all the way out. And if you can also flex your hand down so that you can feel that stretch all the way into the inside of the elbow. So this is a great counter stretch for people who carry lots of heavy things, groceries, children, Bend that elbow. Now you're gonna sandwich the arm together, nice and tight. And here, really clench your muscles together, right? Activate. So we're warming up this muscle. So holding it for this full round of breath is just warming up the area to help prevent injury. So it's letting the area know, hey, we're gonna do some exercises here, right? Go ahead and release. And now we're gonna do our circle. So stabilize with your opposite arm and then just do those circles, lubricate that joint. Three of them in one direction. So warming up the muscles first is just a nice respectful way to avoid injury. It's kind of like introducing the exercise with a handshake instead of a slap in the face. Once you do three direction, three in one direction, switch in the opposite direction. Okay, all set. Next slide. Okay, this is it. We're almost to the grand finale. This is our shoulder press. So for the shoulder press, what you're gonna do is you're gonna reach both arms out in front of you, and then you're going to pull your straight right arm across your body and hook it in your left elbow. So you can see here, my right arm stays straight, my left elbow bends, and we're just gonna hold this for three full breaths. So the tighter you pull your right arm in, the more of a stretch you're gonna feel down the back of the arm and into the shoulder. This is our preparation for our grand finale. Close your eyes and breathe deeply. One more full round of breath. Really great. For artistic flourish, I like to unsweep my arms, bring them all the way up, get a nice stretch, and then bring the arms back down and hook 
the left arm and the right elbow, three full rounds of breath. One more full round of breath. Beautiful job. So they open your eyes, release that arm. I'm gonna slide back a little bit. Okay, next slide. This is it guys, the grand finale. Are you excited? We are going to do a headstand. Just kidding, we're doing shoulder circles. Maybe one day we'll do the headstand. You know, there are seven different headstands to choose from. It's true. Okay, shoulder circles, here we go. Now, I realize some of you might be in a confined space. You might have to do one shoulder circle at a time. That's perfectly fine. I'm gonna let you work at your own pace, but the, the point here is to do shoulder circles in one direction, which is swimming the arm forward, right? And then the other direction, swimming the arm back, okay? So if you can do them both at the same time, good for you. You might need to stand up. So you wanna reach both arms up and overhead. We're gonna come forward first like you're swimming. So you're gonna bring both arms down, back around, up like you're doing the brush stroke, all the way up. And then bring them down, swim them back behind you, all the way up. You can look up right at the top, get a nice stretch there, all the way down. You can bring your chin to your chest. Inhale, sweep them up, up, up. And then exhale, hands to heart center. We're gonna do the same thing, but this time we're going to swim the arms back behind us. So I'm kind of angling here, so I don't knock my whole half down. Inhale, you're gonna take your arms up, and this time you're gonna swim them back as if you're doing the breaststroke, and then around, up, and overhead. So you just wanna go in the opposite direction. Yes, beautiful breathing. Drop them back down on the exhale. Inhale, reach them up. Exhale, drop them down. Let's do one more. Inhale, reach them up, big stroke. Exhale, reach back behind you, drop them down. Inhale, reach your hands up. Exhale, hands to heart center. Keep your hands at your heart center. At the end of every yoga class, we typically say namaste to each other. It just means all the goodness and the light in me respects, honors, and bows to the same in you. Does that mean there's no bad? No, but as yogis and yoginis, we choose to focus on the positive. Thank you so much for allowing me to guide your yoga practice today and namaste. So namaste. Yes, you drop your chin to your chest and you would return that namaste back to your teacher and your fellow yogis. Namaste. Namaste, everyone. So now we are moving on to, are we on time? Pretty much. We're moving on to questions. Okay, so do, do, do. Um, the seated twists, uh, we will do, we'll just do one seated twist. Um, so, so the seated twist, if you're, if you're still with me, um, you would wanna lengthen the spine, sitting in your comfortable seated position. And then on the exhale, you just wanna turn your body towards the right. And if you have a chair, you can reach for the, the armrest of the chair on the right side. And if you want to, you can always reach for the back of the chair. I don't have a back of the chair. And then if you don't have either, you can always just stack your elbows and turn both elbows to the right. Look over your right shoulder, take a full round of breath. And then inhale, come back through center, keep your spine long, and then exhale, take it to the other side. So you can either have both of your hands on the, the chair, uh, you can reach for the back of your chair, or you can just have your elbows stacked like I dream of Jeannie and look over that left shoulder for a full round of breath. And that was our bonus pose. So go ahead and come back through center. We had a question in the chat about if you have back issues. If you have back issues, I would definitely um, do all of the exercises up to the ones that involve the back because you never know when a yoga pose could actually aggravate a condition that people have. And I've known people who come to yoga to help a condition and actually make it worse because that's not what's gonna help that condition. So if you have back issues or know someone who does, I would definitely focus on very gentle neck circles, wrist circles, elbow circles, ankle circles, um, and uh, maybe neck circles, but it depends on, again, where the neck issue is, if it's higher in the body towards the uh, cervical spine. So the spine has three segments. The cervical spine is at the top. The thoracic spine is the ribs. And then the, the lumbar spine is the low back. So you'd want to avoid exercises for those parts of the back if the injury is there or the issue is there. 
I hope that helps. Any other questions? Nia has added the link for the survey in the chat. We're gonna open it up for questions and answers, hopefully. Um, does anyone else have a question? 